calling you a radical. This is a historic important video because baseball mirrors culture. Culture mirrors baseball. And if you don't think that, you don't know shit. You don't know anything. Go ask Ken Burns, the bottom of the 13th. And I'm going to talk about this journey of Corey Seegers. And, well, my journey as the activist as full of cancer. So, Corey Seager played his first professional baseball game right there. So, rookie ball is an 18-year-old. So this is important because Coleman Nitty Sweater plays into this because they are, anybody who owns anything from Coleman's knows they're the quality of all quality. Of course, that went away. So I sit at the Raptors games and I have a friend who has Down syndrome, severe Down syndrome, named Jason. He wears his Corey Seager jersey to every game, number 46. It's thick. It's really well made and made by Coleman Knitting Sweaters. The sports merchandising here now is beyond pitiful. So, of course, this is the Dodgers affiliation. There's a long time relationship with Ogden and the Dodgers. You know, they broke up for a little while and the Brewers came in here. But they got back together. Long, long, passionate love affair. This, you should have seen this in 88 when the Dodgers, I mean, this town is so fucking Dodgers it was. Not now. They got a fucking divorce, and I mean an ugly fucking divorce. People hate the fucking Dodgers here now. I mean, hate them, including me. We fucking hate them, what they did to us. Really hate them, the greedy fuckheads. We handed them on a silver platter, fucking Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer. You know, in the old days, it was John Athlete down there on the wall, that beautiful. We handed them Steve Garvey on a silver platter. We handed them Tommy Lasorda. We handed them Bobby Valentine. We handed them freaking, say, Lobes, Charlie Huff, over and over and over, these superstars. We did it here. Cody Bellinger, Kenley Jensen was a catcher here. I was at the game when they switched him. Of course, we go back to the Ogden Reds. Frank Robinson, we go back to the A's that were here for just a little while, double A, Ricky Henderson. Now, I've been saying for a long time, and everybody knows, let's walk over here, and i got to show you this. So, everybody knows, Corey Seager is the, everyone's favorite player here, everyone's. He came here, I'm full of cancer, I'm dying. So, I call myself the 2012 San Francisco Giants, as you know. I got cancer in 2011. Who was in the World Series there? 2011? Oh, the Rangers. I hate the Cardinals. Always hated them. So, they beat them. I didn't get to watch. That's the only World Series I've never watched because I was full of cancer. By the way, right there, I'm the guy that named that home run Jesus. And anybody that's been in this ballpark... Knows this is the most beautiful baseball park in the world, bar none. I'm the guy that named that. Ask anybody around here. I'm the guy that named it Home Run Jesus. Clear back in the day in 97, when this beautiful park. I was on the committee that built this freaking thing. I mean, so well plowed out, so well done. So let's walk here and I want to show you something. Everybody knows I'm rehabbing from open heart surgery this year, and then we'll get back to the 2011 12 dynamic. So, I spent the whole summer here rehabbing every game, never missed a game. Watching the great Reese Alexianis break the all-time home run record in the history of this fucking town in 123 years of baseball. Go clear back to the Ogden Lobsters. I could write a book. Oh, I just did. There's Seeger, 46. And rightfully, look who he's next to, Ricky Henderson. So, everybody knows when I walk through here, it's been that way for years. Everybody knows. When I walk through here, the first thing I do, I go right to the Corey Seager poster on the wall, and I, boom, high-five him because he's my favorite. Because he's everybody's favorite here because he was such a, well, God, he was just a kid when he came here. And I mean a kid. 
He was so young. I mean, he looked like he was 14 when he got here. I came to his first game, but he's the number one pick, so we know. There he is. I got some great stories about Cody Bellinger, but I was usually gone most of the time on the California tide pools. There he is. So everybody knows when I come in here, first thing I do is I high five Corey Seager in and out. So first player in the history of Major League Baseball to win the MVP in both leagues. You don't think that's a big deal? Oh, it's a big deal. You know, the Dodgers, the asterisk, the 2020, the shortened season, everybody hates the. I hate the fucking, the whole country hates the Dodgers now. Them, they ruin baseball with their analytical bullshit. That's the worst manager in history. The greatest choke artist in the history of sport, that's unarguable. That's Kershaw. The Dodgers are the greatest choke artists. They're billionaire fucking payroll that they can't win with. There's Frank. Robinson. They're billionaire fucking payroll that they cannot win with. So, they, we hate the Dodgers here now. You know, everybody does. When we used to love, we, we had a fucking, we got a divorce. I cannot believe they're letting this part go to shit. Oh, it pisses me off. Really pisses me off. Fuck. Well, the Caldwell... Well, I'm not a fan of Baggett's. Is sports merchandising? Not even. I mean, absolutely disgusted with it. Now, I did that good interview with the Standard when they broke their moratorium against me right there. Right over there is that apartment building. I'm the first one going crazy about that nightmare. Fuck. The Caldwell. Worst mayor we ever had, and I worked for every fucking mayor in this city since I was a kid. That's a fact. All the restoration in this town, I did it. By the way, I want to show you this fake Ephus piece of shit logo thing they got. See that piece of shit thing right there? That's styrofoam. Now, the brickwork here is grand. It's really nice. So, but I know who did it. The old Ogden Artisans. So, this stadium is incredible. Really incredible. Let's walk back. Let's get up here. So, we'll get back to my story, Corey's story, America's story. If you don't think baseball mirrors culture and culture mirrors baseball, you don't know anything. Oh, it mirrors it. So, Kevin Blanch, probably the greatest activist in an entire generation. Well, it's unarguable. Fukushima, 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 2011. I get cancer. I mean, radical cancer, where it's going to kill me. I go into the Beaumont Trench on 11, 11, 11. The fall classic of 2011, I, I was in pain because I got sick in early October and they couldn't get me diagnosed. And I was dying. I, the only time I, I didn't get to see one play of the World Series, not one, the first time in my life. And I love the fall classic. I mean, I, fall. Try me. So, I'm dying. I'm in a bone marrow transplant center for, I'm quarantined basically for nine months. I come out in late June, early July of 2012. So, I'm trying to rehab. I'm trying to, I have a central line hanging on my jaw. I weigh 119 fucking pounds. I can barely walk. So, I come to the Raptors game because the view, it's so beautiful, I can barely walk. And I come here and they've signed the number one pick, the Dodgers, Corey Seager, who was a phenom in high school. I mean, he was just one of these incredible. He gets here, he looks like he's about 14 years old. And he wasn't no on fire, just tear it up. By the way, I did all the restoration on that building the old post office. I used to do all the restoration on those. You know, I knew Joe McQueen personally, tan Joe McQueen. Don't get me going on that Caldwell nightmare. So, my uncle's office used to be in there. I could write a whole book just on this area, Electric Alley. That's where all the prostitution was when I was a kid right there. 
this town was run by pride, but this is a baseball town. Baseball it goes back to 1899. You know, hardcore baseball town. I mean, so I come out in 2012 and I come out here and we have a, there's a kid playing here that was just going crazy then, Valdez and uh, Jose. And everybody's over there talking to him. Well, I'm over talking to Corey Seeger, you know, visiting with him. I'm going to break out my 2012 hat that I had him sign. It was Dodgers 50th anniversary, so I got a Dodgers 50th anniversary hat that, and I didn't pay for it, somebody gave it to me. And I think I have the ticket from his the first professional game he ever played. I'm sure I have his first home run. As people know, when Reese Alexianas broke the all-time record here, just shattered, people were arguing. They didn't even know what the fucking record was. I would physically go over there. One of the balls landed all day. I would get him. And that was hard. You know, I'm I'm rehabbing from open heart surgery this year. You know? And so I'd get every ball and have him sign them and date them, which I used to do with Corey. I, I really felt like he was that. You know, I was at the, his first professional game. This ball that I have signed here is his seventh professional game. Dated. So, I'm dying, I'm dying. I come out, I'm sucked up. It looks like I'm going to die. It looked like I'm here. I'm trying to stay alive. I'm really fighting and struggling to stay alive. And so, 2012, you know, I, I don't root for a uniform. I like players, and I like teams. Now, who's managing the Rangers? What? 2012 San Francisco Giants. Sandoval pence up against the fence. Buster Posey. So, I'm in the Bomero Transplant Center back again. I mean, I'm dying. It looks like it's over in the fall of 2012. Now, remember, the Giants lost the first two games in the divisional series to the Reds. In a, you know, it's a five-game series. They lost the first two at home. They got to go to Cincinnati and win three. That ain't going to happen. They go to Cincinnati game three and basically get one hit in nine innings. Well, they're done, right? No. How's that possible? They stay alive. They stay alive. They stay alive. Great defense. That's what I did. That night, I was going in and out of a coma. That very night. I remember watching it on TV and slipping in and out of it, you know, in the bone marrow transplant. I'm dying. I'm hanging on clean to fucking life. That's the closest I came to probably dying. That very day, they win in 10 innings, two to one, with no hits. Just all defense, all defense, all defense. All. And I don't think people realize this. Corey Seager has... Oh. You think he's got a bat? He's better with the glove. He's incredible with the fucking glove. So, absolutely incredible. So, he gets the MVP. So, back to 2012. So, then they come back. And, you know, I'm the marine biologist in the high desert of Utah. And game four... I don't know how they won that game, uh, but they won it. Lincecum. Oh, I love Lincecum. Now, recently, Lincecum's wife has died of the same disease that I had, had, battling. It's like my daughter says, Kevin Lynch, stage four. Kevin Lynch was stage five. <laughs> so what's stage five? When they give up and send you home with hospice. You know, there's the great brickwork. There's a great one. I'm very proud of this baseball park. And it's been gone show. And rightfully so, everybody that puts this together, you know, should be very proud of themselves. I mean, it's gone to shit. And I'm disgusted. But the, the view and the feel, I mean, it's not taken care of with the shit. It's disgusting. So... To come back, they win the series. I'm like, how is that even possible? I start to make a little comeback. Then they go to them scumbag Cardinals. Cardinals are up on them 3-1. So 
Oh, they come back again. Remember what's his name for the Tigers was the Triple Crown winner. First one we've had since what? Yaskrimski, Ted Williams. So they sweep, what? The 2012, so now I'm walking the coast of California in 2013, 14, so I gotta go, you know, to those games that, cause I'm working the coast. I'm doing, I'm the marine biologist, as you know. That reminds me, I gotta tell this story. Kenley Jensen was a catcher here. I was here the day they switched you to pitcher because they were out of pitcher, which is very common at this level of baseball. So everybody knows around here and everybody knows me as far as baseball and we were say football and basketball. Every time I walk in this park, in and out, the first thing, and because it's 2012, oh yeah, I always high five. I always give a fist bump to court every time. My favorite player, oh yeah, oh yeah. And so the 2012, Kevin Lynch. Now, who was the manager in 2012 of those Giants? Now, I didn't get to see that. The Rangers got beat. Not this time. So when they trade Corey from the dime, I'm like, yes. I was not, I'm not a Rangers fan. I don't, I'm not a fan of any uniform. But I'm like, let's see him do his thing, you know? Let's see him do his thing, which I knew he could. So I'm up at the hospital this year. I'm getting a blood drawn, and I'm listening to the game on my phone. They're playing the Orioles. I grew up an Orioles fan. My favorite player when I was a kid was always Eddie Murray. Always Eddie Murray. I picked the right one. And uh, so comes across the radio. Corey Seager has walked again, just broke the all-time history of postseason baseball. Now, that's a long time. 119 World Series, all them playoff games. It's a lot of games. Five walks in one <laughs> series. So, he's a tactician? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Rightfully so, he's next to the greatest player in the history of Ogden. Well, fuck, one of the greatest history players in the history of baseball. Ricky Henderson. Yeah, he played here in 79. Bill Lapper. They bumped him up. So, of course, Corey comes here. He's a first rounder up. And you think, well, he'll play two, three games here. They're just bumping. Oh, no. He played the whole season here once he got here. He didn't get here until July. Very end of June, July. Just like when I got back out of the hospital. And played the whole season. I don't think people know this about Corey Seager. He played minor league baseball the old-fashioned way. He played rookie ball for a whole season. He played single A for a whole season. He played double A for a whole season. He played triple A. They don't do that. Nobody does that. You know? Nobody does that, right? He did it. You're going to run through the stop sign? Yeah. So. Oh, Jesus. Everybody, oh, Prince Fielder, Prince Fielder. Oh, fuck. Prince Fielder hit, what, eight, ten home runs here. Reese Alexiana this year hit 29. So. Let's get out your ball and flip it. So. I'm standing, there's a bar, we have a bar in there. A real bar, not just a beer bar, a beer bar. And let's really turn the fans off. And the fans have fled out of here, they sell these packages, but the hardcore fans have left here. Why? Well, the ridiculous prices of beer they charge in there. So we walk out during the game. You know, once you pay for your ticket, you get in, we walk out, we go right over to Brewski's or Slackwater and drink the exact same beer for $4 and come back in, because it's right there, and he's charging 11 so I'm standing at the bar. I'm not going to fucking buy their overpriced shit. Their sports merchandising junk, paper thin shit. I'll give you a trick here in Ogden, too. Anything their sports merchandise sending for $100, $200, $300, you just wait till wintertime, and you go to Savers, and you buy it for five. That's not I'm joking. <laughs> joking. You know, back when Coleman made the stuff, it was fucking oh, quality as hell. I mean, Ogden, the old artisan city. I mean, Kevin Blanche, the last great artisan in Ogden. So, as you know, this battle's gone on with me for a long time. As you know, I've had open heart surgery twice because of the heavy chemo. I lost my gallbladder, I lost my OT. I've been in critical condition basically for fucking 12 fucking years. So, when I saw the Rangers were back in, I'm like, God, maybe we can reverse this. 
Apo Nightmare 2011. I got a Mitch. I, you know, so I'm rooting for him. And of course, I've always, I always root for Corey Seager. And so, again, we were hardcore Dodgers fans. My friend that I grew up with is Glenn Hubbard. His younger brother, Steve, was like my best friend. You know, he died young. His heart blew up. Great football player. But Glenn, you know, and I were friends, really close friends. He was in on the field in 88. He's playing for the A's, and I hated actually. I mean, I couldn't stand that dude. And when Gibson hit that home run, we were over there, but fuck, I went crazy. I compare Corey Seager's home run on that sleeper riser. I mean, <laughs> Seager, you, you tried to throw that riser on him, that late release that rises, that weird pitch. Oh, Corey fucking Seager fucking put a rise into that. He ripped. That's the fastest fucking hit home. I've never seen a home run like that. I compare it to Kirk Gibson's home run. I really do. It was the bottom of the ninth. They're down by two. It changed the whole series. Fuck, did he rip it or did he fucking rip it? And remember, this is a shortstop that's fucking known for his glove. Oh, not now. <laughs> I mean, you're talking a fucking gold glover fucking with that glove. So... Ogden and the Dodgers had a nasty divorce, really ugly, nasty divorce. And the Dodgers stuck it to Ogden, those greedy fuckers. I can't stand nobody here can say. And everybody's fled here, you know, because of the sports merchandising is out. It's ridiculous. The beer prices are insane. And so I came to every game this year because I wanted to watch. Reese Alexianis shatter this fucking 123-year-old fucking record here, which he did. You know, people are arguing with me here, and I'm like, you guys are supposed to be fucking hardcore... All the, all the old hardcore baseball guys are fucking dead. Last of the Mohicans. I, try me. You want to try me on Ogden baseball? Fucking try me on Ogden, Utah. Try me on any of the history here. So, Corey winning the fucking MVP in both leagues is historic as fucking hell. Really historic. So let's break out your fucking ball. I'm so... And you know, the money's obscene. The money's grotesque. We know that, right? We all fucking know the money is grotesque. It's obscene. But who gives a fuck? Fuck the money. It's still about fucking baseball. What a beautiful fucking game. And culture and baseball, if you don't think they don't marry each other, you don't know anything. I mean, Ken Burns' piece on it is fucking beyond excellent. Let's flip our soup can right here. Into the sun? Why not? Fuck it. Congratulations, Corey Seager. I am so thrilled because everybody puts an asterisk next to that Dodgers 2020. Rightfully so. Because that season wasn't fair. Nothing was fair in 2020. It's just, it's metaphorical again that the Dodgers even won it. Are you going to really pull that out? Yeah. If I can get it out. I guess you're going to have to flip it in the case. I thought I could, I thought I could get this out of the case. I thought I had it unsealed. Yeah, I knew I did. Okay. Easy. You're really going to do this. Oh, yeah. I'm sure there's other ones out there. People had people sign stuff in those days, but not a lot. Oh, they Kevin at 7-11. Was that the score of one of the games? 2012, fine early. I think that's his seventh professional baseball game of his career. I think, I'm sure I have his first. I wonder if I got some videos. Drop it. Yeah, no shit. Like your soup can. When I was fighting cancer, I never dropped that soup can. Ever. Right here. You can see it. It's turn two. Let's set this camera somewhere. I'll tell him like the thing. You know, most beautiful baseball park in the world. By the way, Jason, who's severely, he's getting older now. Hard, he's the biggest Corey Seager fan in fucking history. I used to tell him all the time, we got to get Corey to sign that jersey. Coleman, he wears it every fucking game. And he's the biggest Corey Seager fan in the world. I'll guarantee it. 
you know. He has that Coleman. That thing is such a fucking gem, that jersey. Right, right into the sun? Yeah, why not? Fuck it. IRS scumbags right there. Oh. I always wanted to name the team in those days when they first, you know, we we're building this park, we didn't have a team, and then Baggett saw the opportunity for the trappers and jumped it. I wish he wouldn't have, but anyway, I think we'd probably have double A by now. They came from Vegas, and I'm really not a fan of that whole product. But it is what it is. I always wanted to name them when we're putting this together. I want to name them the trains. The Ogden Trains. You can hear the train in the background. I always want to name the Ogden Trains. I still do. You know, we've had the lobsters. We've had the red legs. We've had the swinging A's. You know. The Raptors logo is iconic, right? Oh, fuck. <laughs> He's made so much money off that fucking sport. Perfect diving is insane. Okay. Come on, Blanche. Corey's a lefty. About the backhand flip. He's a lefty. How about that fucking flip at the second base? It's turn two. That's turn two. Congratulations. Now, they use DNA on sports merchandising now. You do know that. Well, let's DNA it. DNA down. Kevin Blanche, the 2012 San Francisco Giants. Greatest comeback in sport history. I challenge anybody to find one better. Let's clear down the aisle to see what they, That's the greatest comeback in sport history. Well, Kevin Blanche's comeback. Hook going in out of a coma. 2011. 119 pounds sitting there. I would visit with Corey. I used to stand right there and talk to him. You know, he was just a kid. Really happy. Had a big smile. Young. Yeah, I mean, really young. He looked 14. Well, fuck, he looks fucking 20 now. He's only 29 years old. And what he's done, we were talking the other day, I said, well, there's no doubt Ricky Henderson's the greatest player ever played here in Frank Robinson. You can debate either one of them ever. Incredible. Let's see if he might play. Let's see. Both. We'll see. But I think they won it in 2012 with him here. Pretty sure they did. The pioneer did. So, congratulations, Corey C. I want to get this. I am fucking so thrilled. Everybody here is. He's like Ogden, Utah's favorite fucking player of all time. And I'm not kidding you. People love him. You know? These other greats that played here, it's been a long time. You know? We love fucking Steve Garvey. He's still living here. But this is Tommy Lasorda land. Fuck, Lasorda's a god here. Really, seriously. I'm not kidding. He literally is a god. So, should we walk back over there and flip the ball one more time? Nah. Oh, yeah. We can get this once. First player to win. Look, Ma. No fucking hands. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'll turn the camera off and fix that. I can do it. Come on. Uh, set the camera down. Come on, Kev. One man bam watch after all these years. So historic what he did. So historic what he did. You know, he got away from the fucking Dodgers. I was so thrilled. You know, I'm like Rangers. Uh -huh. I couldn't believe the Rangers win. They never won it before. No. Not even with Nolan Ryan. And so, let's walk over here one last time. Why not, you know? I won't get another opportunity. I can write a whole book about minor league baseball here. I should. Oh, I just did, as people know. It's 
cold. It's fucking November in Ogden. Come on, what do you think? It's supposed to be cold. You're jaywalking, Blanche. Yeah, maybe fuck Caldwell come fuck and have your night stick. So, the park is grand. Caldwell's the worst mayor we ever had. And I worked for every mayor there ever was, including the mayor when we built this. You know? And if ever been inside this park and saw the view, and it's in the evening with the sun on it, it will take your fucking breath away. I'm telling you, it's the most beautiful park, baseball park in the world. Bar none. Bar fucking none. None's even close. I'm telling you. And it's a great place to rehab, which I did all this year and in 2012 when I could. I got to, I saw a lot of his games in 2012. I ended up back in the hospital again in 2012, but not till the season was over. I got my two, three months out and to watch Corey. And so it means a lot to me as far as this circle, because I've been in critical condition. You know, I had open heart surgery again this year from the chemo. You know, I have a pacemaker. You know, I don't know how I'm alive. And so this, because baseball metaphors matter. I get that. Baseball metaphors matter. You know? Like I said, every freaking time when I come in here, and everybody knows it here. I have lots of pictures right there. First thing I do when I come in, first thing I go out is I fist bump Corey. That's my lucky little thing right there. And everybody knows it. You know, he my favorite player ever played not. Oh, yeah, by far. Fucking, I think he's a lot of people's favorites here. No doubt. People loved him. He was friendly. He was fucking polite. He was fucking nice. He, Reese Alexianis this year reminds me a lot of him. He really does. What a glove he has out in center field. And just hit 29 home runs, still 29. Broke every fucking record in 123 years. Ogden's ever seen. So. Corey. Like I said, the Dodgers in Ogden got a fucking nasty divorce. Oh, we hate the Dodgers, what they stuck to us. You know, the rich fucking big parent fucking just stuck it to us, fucking lowly peasant fans. Man, she's a lefty. What a play that was, huh? The home run that he ripped, I still think it is. I call I don't believe what I just fucking saw. You know, that's Jack Buck's incredible call. I still don't believe that. Kirk Gibson. Looking out there. Buck was right over there. I went crazy. Fuck, this whole town went crazy. And I got to tell the story. So, my little girls and I drove to San Diego. You know, I go back and forth from here to San Diego on the Marine Biologist. So, I'm standing in the bar right there this year, last year. And a guy walks up to me, and I'm just visiting with Barry. Friends with him, who runs the bar. I don't know why they're all price fucking beer. It's insane. And this guy walks up and he says, "Oh my God, you're the Marine Bowers. You're the type of guy from California." Yeah, that's where you live. He says, "San Diego." And we're talking San Diego baseball. We're talking Tony Gwynn, his cancer, blah blah blah. blah. He says, "Let me buy you a beer." Okay. So he buys me a beer. We're standing there, right here, <laughs> in the bar, which a foul ball never comes to the bar. Though. It's so rare because it's got to be just. Perfect, you know, because it's netted and it's right on the third base. And it's a full blown up ball. I'm standing there, it's a Sunday, I'm just bullshitting my name right here. And I got a full beer in my uh, left hand, or my right hand. And here comes a lazy fly ball. And I'm standing there, and I don't even fucking move. I, I mean, not literally, big not move hands, I just reach up for it. like that. and just like that. Or is it he's like, I don't believe I just saw that. <laughs> I don't believe I just fucking 
when Corey hit that home run. I'm like, that's 1988. So I'm driving with my little girls from Ogden to San Diego in my car. And we stop in Vegas to get some food. And, you know, I look at the board and the Dodgers are 30 to 1. Just because. So we go to the game. Dodgers playing San Diego. It's might have been opening. I can't remember. It was close to opening. At my favorite stadium in the world that they just tore down. San Diego State. I fucking love that state. I spent so much of my life there. I got so many stories with my kids anyway. Blah, blah, blah. We're playing the Dodgers. John Crook goes crazy. We're going for the Padres. Beat them. I'm like, I'm going to throw that ticket away. You know, season goes on. But they had Oral Hershiser, didn't they? I still don't believe they won the World Fucking Series. I still, I don't believe the Rangers. Or the Rangers. Season started. How many games did they lose two years ago? I think 100. You know, even though W threw out the first pitch, I really can't stand that ball. By the way, I remember when Reagan drove right down this fucking road right here. Because I lived right over there. And they, the Secret Service came to my house before he came and interviewed me. Want to know why I had guns, blah, 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 blah. And I was wasted. I remember talking to Secret Service because Jay, who owned Cords, lived right across the street from me. He had that promo van. And on the side, remember I had the taps on the side? This is a beer can. And I would just walk away. I used to say, there's always like there were beer. You need beer. And I just walk around. I'm wasting. <laughs> Reagan! All of the roads lead to Malkin. All of the roads. I always want to call Malkin trains. Congratulations, Corey Seager. His first professional baseball game was here. Here. I'm sure I have his first fucking game ticket. I know I do. If I can just find it. I'm one of those guys. I have one of everything, if you can just find it. Anyway, congratulate first player in the history of baseball. Of course, the MVP in the World Series has only been around since, what, 55, somewhere around there? No. Historic? Oh, fuck. Fuck. Congratulations, Corey Seager. Fucking Auburn, Utah. They love Corey Seager. The hardcore fans that are left. There ain't many of us. So let's get out of jail, Blanche. Stay in